Our God is so good, so mighty, so strong. He cannot be in the presence of sin. Understand that. All right, so morning, guys. How's everybody doing in the YouTube world today? So Slade with you from Follow the Panthers. So, uh, hey, hey, so what you just saw was just a brief clip. Lots of you that, uh, that follow us every day uh, know that I have been asking for prayer for the Brian Montgomery family. And what you're about to see, uh, just a little brief background, Brian and Courtney Montgomery uh, lost their son, Walker, tragically a couple of weeks ago. And Brian, uh, is Walker's dad, of course, he actually preached Walker's funeral. So I have been with Brian this this, this afternoon, and uh, some of you, if you don't want to do the whole whole YouTube thing, go to Brian Montgomery's Facebook. He also posted uh, this same part of the funeral on his Facebook, and I think he told me today, I, I've been spending some time with him this afternoon, but the video has already got about 15,000 views. But the reason I am posting this is you know, not to not to uh, to bring anything to follow the Fanchers, but Brian's whole goal uh, with this is he wants to try to reach as many people for Jesus as as he can. And you will see in this funeral, even through the the tragic loss of uh, Walker, just how the Holy Spirit was 100% in that church today. He spoke through Brian that day. There's, there's no other way to explain what you're about to see except it was, it was just a Jesus thing. It was 100% a Jesus thing. So, you know, there's not a whole lot I can say. I want you guys to just sit back and uh, watch this video. We're going to start this with prayer, and we're going to end it with prayer. I want you guys to be prepared for something here that's not traditional, not normal. It's going to be the best funeral you've ever been to. Let's pray. Lord God, I tell you that We're not just on our bending knees, Lord, we're on our face. As a community, we're, we're broken, Lord. There's people that knew Walker, loved Walker. This opportunity we have, Lord, is brought about, brought about so rarely to have this conversation about you how real you are, how present you are, most of Lord, how powerful you are. Lord, I'm not asking, I'm not just pleading, I'm hanging on your word of your promise. You've made a promise, Lord, that you'll protect us and I ask you to bind Satan right now. I ask you to keep him out of this place because there's people here that need, need you, Lord. And they're going to have the opportunity today to accept you. I pray that you'll be with my words. They'll be your words. And where my words are wrong, I pray you'll translate them with your Holy Spirit in a way that only you can. I pray for boldness. I pray for the reality that, Lord, we are in a fight. And I want these people to understand that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So something I've always told Courtney is one day I'm gonna die. And my mindset around when I do die, I always want it to be viewed as a party because of the history of my life would dictate that reality. That everybody here and people that knew me would know that there's no question where I was, no question I did what I could do and for God's glory. There's been times in my life when I didn't. I've made my share of mistakes. Walker made his share of mistakes. Everybody in here has made their share of mistakes. But the mindset around a party 
Courtney will tell you, I never dreamed it would be trying to orchestrate a party for my son. Anybody in a hurry? Is it okay if I take my time? Yeah, I know you'd feel that way. So I want you to hear that in this, in this message that I've agonized over, my friends have agonized over. There's people in this congregation right now praying for it. There's people all around the state. There's people all around the country right now praying right this second for this message. So if you know Walker, and a lot of you did, some of you didn't, some of you here to support friends and family and people that did know him. I'm his daddy, so I know I'm biased, but Walker was special. Different kind of special. He had a work ethic like no other. He loved, each, he loved people. You read the obituary, all that's absolutely true. I can't make it any prettier than that, Christy Brown. Wherever you're at. Um, but the vision I want you to see today of Walker, if you were ever at a football game, no matter where in his career as a football player, you saw, if you ever saw him on the sideline, I'm not talking about when he's out there playing because we know he gave it everything he had. Don't we, boys? I'm talking about when he was on that sideline. When he wasn't in the game, he was as close to being in the game as he could be. He was pulling for you. He was paying attention. He was tuned in 1,000%. And wherever the coach that was responsible for his in or out was, Walker was right behind him. Because he wanted to be noticed. He wanted to be there. And I can tell you that that was not taught, that was not told, that was not just say, hey, Walker, stay there. That was Walker recognizing that somebody was right there with him that needed to put him in, he wanted to be in. But when he was on that sideline, he was pulling for his team. So I want you, as we talk through this, I want you to recognize that's who Walker was. He's pulling for you. If you're in this building right now and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, and there's people here. God's told me this, I know this. There's people here, you may have been in church your whole life, there's people here who do not know Jesus. Walker's pulling for you. He's walking down the sideline with Jesus right now. He said, don't walk out of this building. What I want to tell you right now is that there's no secret what happened to Walker. We're not avoiding that. We're not walking away from it. I want you to know this is not of God. It's a sin. It's a satanic sin, 100%. If you believe the devil's not true, that's where he wants you. He attacked Walker. Why did he attack Walker? Walker's a good kid. We know what he was. We know who he was. We know his heart. Why Walker? I can tell you why Walker. Because why Walker was the best. Period, full stop, and I'm his daddy. If you knew him, you know that. He was the best among our family, great brother, great son, loved his mama. Mama loved him more than you can imagine. But I want you to hear that Satan attacks those families that can make a difference for him, make a difference for God, and that have the ability to affect the kingdom. That's every family in this building. It's just a question if you're in the fight or not. And I'm convinced, and I believe you're convinced, that God is using Walker right now. There's going to be a temptation in this community for somebody to say this is somebody's fault. going to be a temptation to community to say all kinds of things. There's a lot of things we don't know right now about what led to this with Walker. We know it don't make sense. That's going to be a temptation that I'm telling you is coming straight from the devil. If you're directing that at anybody but Satan, you're wrong. You're wrong. Let's repent of that if you're doing that.
So let me give you a father's perspective of this. There is no greater pain this side of the fires of hell themselves no greater pain I'm telling you that not because I want you to feel sorry for me because I want you to know that God is fixing that in me in our family I want you to know that I can't fix it I am not up here my voice is not coming out of this body. God is working in me to do this. 100%. Not 99, 100%. So I'm gonna read you some, some scripture. Psalms 40, one through three said, I waited patiently for you, the Lord, and he inclined me and heard my cry. He's heard our cry, loud and clear. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, and set my feet on solid rock, making my footsteps firm. If you ever been in gumbo, Terry Grissom, you know what that feels like. Gumbo's hard to pull. Get it on your boots, can't hardly move. He put us on concrete. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God, Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. You're part of the many. I don't want you to hear anything else. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. The reason many will trust in the Lord is because many will see something God only can do. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take upon my yoke, take upon you, and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want you to understand how that happens. It's not just a voice you get at night, and it's not just a feeling you get after Mexican food. That's the people in your life. It's the people in our life. We've seen it so clearly. If you have been in this process with us, if you have not been in contact with us, that's okay. Don't feel like you have to. If you've gotten just a little bit of time and not a lot of time, that's okay. I'm telling you, thank you. I'm telling you, thank you for listening to God and letting him use you. These are all words of encouragement, ain't they? Encourage us. Anybody say yes? Do they encourage you? Yeah, they encourage you. It meant to show us that no matter how dark it seems, God wants us to cry out to him. So we've always heard the most, we've always heard the most commonly cited verse probably in scripture, especially in the South, is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We can recite that in our sleep, can't we? Most of us. Have we ever thought about what it says? God gave. I want you to understand this today because as close as a person can understand this reality, I do today. And I can't fully because... I thought about something. God didn't have a son for 30 years or 16 years like I did. He had, a God, he had a son for eternity. Jesus has always been there. He didn't show up. Jesus has always been part of God. But you know what he did? He took that same pain I have times infinity and voluntarily gave it. Voluntarily gave it to you, gave it to me. People, a people that rejected him, spit on him, crucified him for those people. So it's hard for me to understand how could God voluntarily do that for me, knowing the pain that that comes with. Um, this is a demonstration of God's love for us. No way around it.
So how can we know, how can we know the God of all time? Not but one way, it's through his son, Jesus Christ. There's no other way. Can't be good enough. Can't go to enough charities. Can't give enough money. Can't raise good enough kids. None of that. None of that will do it. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's telling him, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord, period. You're going to be first in my life. So I'm going to read you some scripture here. And I want you to find in these scriptures um, some things that you may have in your heart that would say, I've been waiting to be saved because you didn't see yourself in the right place. So the first one is Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every one of us. If you've ever told a white lie, anything. If you've never, if you think you had never sinned, Adam passed that sin nature right on to us. You've got it. I've got it. I'm not a bad person, right? I, I just, I'm okay. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. How does that make sense? Why would death be the penalty? Our God is so good, so mighty, so strong. He cannot be in the presence of sin. Understand that. Somebody else will say, well, I'm too bad to be saved. I can't be saved. I've done too much. Romans 5, 8. God demonstrates his love towards us in, a, in, in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. You think God didn't know what you were doing? You think God didn't know where you were at? He, you need him more than anybody. And if you can move that belief from a zero to a one, he's going to take you the rest of the way. Romans 10, 9, this is the key verse, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's pretty plain, ain't it? Will, will be saved. Not might, not we hope you will. You will be saved. I want you to understand that right now is that time. Not in 30 minutes, not next week, not in a month, not in a year. We're not going any further in these church services until we have this conversation. We're gonna address this community in the question of salvation. No person here has more authority to unconventionally make this change to this service and Courtney, his mother, and me, his father. This is different, I know. It's not on your bulletin, I know. We don't care if we sing another song. It's for nothing. Back to Walker a little bit. Walker's on that sideline. You've heard the truth. It's 100% truth. He's on that sideline, but now he's got Christ in his corner and he's got the saints looking down and they're looking at you saying, let's go, come on, it's a fight. This is real. This is big boy talk. He's on that sideline and he is cheering you on. He's tuned in today. He's pulling for you. We're going to do this together. Not next week. Not any time in the future. We're going to do this together today. So this is what's going to happen. I'm going to pray. And I'm asking for your full attention in that prayer. And I'm asking you to search your heart. I need two things. Any men throughout this place, every section of this place, any man here that's willing to stand for Christ on faith, I'm not saying stand figuratively, I'm saying stand literally. 
and has the knowledge to lead somebody to Christ. We're packed in here because a lot of people love Walker. That's the first group. Be thinking about that. I've been praying about it. God's been talking to you. These are the main group. Those in this place that have never given their heart to Christ. If you've never given your heart to Christ, I want to be real clear. You're directly on your way to hell. I can't put it any straighter. And that's a place you don't want to be. And I can tell you why I know that. Thursday night after we found out about this, you can't go no lower. Can I get amen? amen? Can't go any lower until you get to that place. And I can tell you right now, you don't want to go there. I'm not trying to scare you, I'm trying to be sober with you. So as I pray, I want you to know something. The men here don't know I was going to do this. There's not men placed throughout this place. There's not men that I've talked to that we've orchestrated. The only one person in this place knows this is Mitt Wardlaw. <laughs> so God's talking to you right now. If you fit those two criteria, he's asking you to stand when we get done praying. So after I get done praying... My faith is that there's going to be men standing all over this auditorium. All you've got to do is raise your hand. If you don't have the courage to raise your hand, you elbow your neighbor and let him raise his hand for you. Everybody understand what God's asking us to do this morning? Yes. Everybody? I'm finna pray. Lord God, I know this is different. I know this isn't normal, which is what Walker was. He was different. He was not normal. He was unique. He was a great person. He was something special, Lord. But today we're talking about someone even more special than Walker, than me, than anybody in this building. That's Jesus Christ, the Lord of the world. And Lord, I know there's people right here in this place right now that are scared, confused. That's the definition of loss, Lord. That's what happens when you get lost. I've been there. And Lord, I know you know those people. I know you've been preparing their hearts since before this ever happened. You've been preparing this situation since the beginning of time. Nothing surprises you. Nothing is unique, Lord, but I want to tell these people through this prayer that this could be a opportunity that they may not get again. This could be the beginning of a revival, not because of Walker, not because of me. I don't know all the circumstances, God, that you have. I don't know how you put this together, but I know that there's enough people that are concerned and loving and wanting to serve you that we can change everything through you. You provide the power, Lord. It's you, all you. So Lord, I pray for all the lost people. There are lost people in this building. I know it. I pray for the men that are sitting there right now thinking in their mind, is he talking to me? If you're asking that question and you fit those two criteria I've laid out, I'm talking to you. Jesus is talking to you. The lost people in this building need you. I know, I know if nobody else, because I have confirmed this 100%, if it's nobody but me and Mitt Wardlaw standing up, we're going to walk through this building and whoever wants to be saved is going to be before we take another step in this service. Lord, we love you. 
We love you for this opportunity, Lord. We love you for Walker. We love you for everything you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And can we get some music? Some piano music. Now these are the men that are willing to lead you. These are the men that have said they are Christians. These are the men that said they're willing to stand in faith. These are the men that are saying, we don't want you to die and go to hell. I don't care if it's one of you. I don't care if it's ten of you. I don't care how many it is. When this music starts, I want to see some hands start going up because you're here. You're here. I know you're here. Please. on the sidelines he's saying come on come to God come to Jesus I want you to understand if you're here and you're lost, it's never too late. This church staff, these men you see around you, you look around you. If it don't happen today and you couldn't find the courage to stand up, you look around at these men and you find them. You find them and you let them know that you need Jesus. And I can guarantee you they'll lead you. If you can't find them, you find me. Thank you. All right, so pretty much all you can say is wow, right? Uh, wow. So look, there are so many people across this country that needed to see what I just shared with uh, you guys here on the YouTube video. So look, if you got family, if you have friends, if you have coworkers, uh, lost, saved, Christian, non-saved, whatever the case may be, I want you to share this video with as many people as you can because there's so many people that need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and what Jesus did for us on the cross at Calvary uh, and, and just what Jesus expects, expects of us and also to see the power of the Spirit as he worked through Brian in this uh, video. So look, if any of you need any kind of counseling, something like that, you let us know in the comments below. I'll do everything I can do to make sure we... Uh, we uh, get you to talk to somebody. I mean, you can send your number through here. I'll call you. I'll get my dad to call you. Brian will call you, whatever it takes. But uh, we just want to reach out, wanted everybody to see this. So God bless. Jesus saves. Thank you for following the Fanchers, and we'll see